Hello again everyone, I'm Jim. Thank you for joining me. This is the first in what will hopefully be a multi-part series on getting started with not only my main home lab, but helping you guys with a uh, home lab to get you up and running uh, with a focus on being a bit cost effective on things. So saving a bit of money on the wallet, but also getting best bang for your buck and uh, also looking at power and uh, obviously lifetime of the equipment that you're using. Now, as everyone is probably aware by now, if you're watching this, you're obviously either already running your own home lab or you're interested in actually getting started. And I mean, home labs can vary in shape, size, can be something quite as simple as Raspberry Pis, make very good little basic boxes, Intel Nooks, similar, small little P small form factor PCs, or old desktop PCs. Again, very capable boxes a lot of the time, just have certain limitations that need to be thought about if you're planning on keeping your home lab for a period of time, whether you're gonna be using it as a hobbyist thing or whether you're gonna be running systems on it 24 seven, 365, uh, whether you want to learn how to do something for fun or whether you're looking at learning on things potentially to help you get a job in business, um, whether you want something, you're a, uh, an IT guy for a small business and you need something to play with so that you can actually do it for real in production. Um, a lot of the time, small businesses don't have the ability to run home lab, uh, not home labs, production or test labs. Um, so it's worth doing, but it's worth doing, in my opinion, with an emphasis on not going with big and shiny, focus on actually what is the most capable, what is the most efficient, and what's going to actually last you a reasonable length of time. Because for myself, it's putting my money into this. For you guys, it's putting your money into this. And if you're putting money into kit that is old, and then you're hitting problems, it wastes your time, it wastes your money because you're having to spend more money. It's more a case of actually looking at what's available and saying, actually, don't spend 100 pounds, 150 pounds on that, spend 160 pounds on it, and it will last you a bit longer. So I'm gonna show you what I've purchased over the last year and uh, been saving up and, and dealing with, and give you some sort of opinions on why I think it's one of the correct ways to go. So let's have a look. And this is the little mishmash of servers that I have acquired, courtesy of eBay over the last year for uh, specifically for this project actually. Now we have down the bottom here, these three here are Dell R420s. This one here is a Dell R320. And this one up here is a HP uh, DL120 Gen 9. Now these are, in my opinion, the oldest generation servers that you should consider. Uh, specifically being anything server-wise, so not just the Dells, but anything server-wise with a E5 Xeon or above should be in consideration. The older X-Series Xeons are just not worth it anymore. The hardware is now out of date, the CPUs are out of date, they're more power-hungry, they are just not worth the effort. You will spend more time dealing with all the fun issues that we had when they were new, dealing with frustrations, dealing with out-of-date firmware, out-of-date management, uh, limitations on the hardware with RAID controllers, that they're just not worth the effort. So this generation upwards, there was a marked change in how systems worked how firmware worked, how remote management worked on these systems, everything changed. And these generations are the oldest I would recommend you consider going. HP, I will admit, I'm not the biggest fan of, purely and simply because they put their firmware behind a paywall. Dell, absolutely love. Uh, what I didn't get hold of was anything like Supermicro, uh, Fujitsu, Lenovo, anything like that. But again, the same applies. 
Sandy Bridge E5 Xeons and above, the actual systems are much better, more efficient, overall just a better experience of how to do things and you're more likely to find this grade hardware not only coming out of data centers and businesses now very cheap but also still in use you're still able to use this hardware to replicate what exists in a real business so if you want to build a home lab specifically so you can learn how businesses do things which is what I'm going to go through with this um, over the next couple of videos this is the level of hardware that you want to be aiming for or above. So 12th gen Dells, so R420s, R620s, R720s if you need more storage. Um, 13th gen Dells, if you can get them at a reasonable price. There's no point throwing money at them because they're only going to come down in price as the 13th generation starts to get filtered out. Same with... The, the, the HPs. The ninth gen HPs are starting to, to come onto the second hand market. Personally, I would avoid the eighth gen. Do not buy the seventh gen and definitely do not buy the sixth gen systems. Um, go for ninth gen, tenth gen if you can find them, but again, they're still relatively new. But if HP is your preference, remember that all the firmware updates are hidden behind paywalls, which means you have to hunt around in some less than favorable places on the internet to find updates for firmware, for BIOS, for management, to bring them up to date, a la best practice. So um, this HP on the top has a, I think it has, well, it's a single socket Xeon. We'll look into it further in a later video. Um, it has no memory in it. Surprisingly, it does turn on. That's as far as I've got with that one. The R320, again, single CPU, a couple of gigs of RAM in it, and the R420s, all the same, single CPUs, two or three gigs of RAM in it, even though these have got hard disk caddies in them, <laughs> they're empty. So I have acquired quite a loadout to go in these, um, and I will we'll run through that over the next couple of videos. First two I'm going to focus on are these top two, the HP and the little R320, and these three we'll get to in later videos with a bit something a bit more complex, but a bit more bigger business orientated that you can actually replicate in your home lab with not a lot of kit. Um, I'm going to cover obviously the power usage of these because again, this generation, the power usage for the CPUs dropped, the core count per processor went up as well. So you can buy, you can upgrade CPUs. They're not expensive for these with 6, 8, 10, 12, I think even 14, and maybe even 16 cores. I could need to double check that for at least one of the, for probably for this generation, but these generations, I'm pretty sure you can get 10 and 4, 12 core CPUs, which again, you're not then having to run multiple CPUs, which saves power. Memory, again, is cheap because it's DDR3. Um, top one is DDR4 because it's a slightly newer generation. But again, memory is quite cheap, so racking and stacking these full of memory, putting a good solid CPU in them, hard disks in them, very flexible. And not only that, they stay quiet. So if this is your home lab, in your home, noise is a critical thing. Again, we'll go into that in a further video. But this is just, to, again, a quick overview of what I will be going through, what I am using for my own labs. These are going to be doing some interesting things. I'm going to have them running game servers. I'm going to have them running logging servers. I'm going to have them running management servers and all sorts of other stuff. We'll build domain controllers, the works with this, because this hardware wise, when it's done, will be a very, very capable network. Now, pricing wise for this, this top server, this HP was £120 off eBay. This little Dell here, I think, was £90 off of eBay. These three here were all somewhere around £80 to £90 off of eBay. For the US people, it's about, I suppose, these are about the equivalent of about $120. This was about $160, and this was about $150. These are, at the moment here, cheap equipment. I know in some parts of the world, they're not. But again... When you see that actually this level of kit contains hardware that is still easily viable as a solution for doing this versus some of the older kit, I have 
dot it around. I will bring in later on and, and do some power comparisons of some 8th gen HPs. I've got a 13th gen Dell, bigger server. I've got some older kit that I will power up and just demonstrate the difference in power usage and power management with this lot. But that is the introduction to this. Hopefully you will join me further on in this. We're going to get started on this server here in the next video and this server here. We'll get them up to date. We're going to get them specced up, loaded up. Not sure what I'm going to run on them yet because, again, the focus on this video is for myself is more on the business side. So primarily we are a Hyper-V and we are a VMware and we are looking at those as operating systems. I don't play with Proxmox much, if at all. I don't play with Unraid. Um, and I don't play with Zen, so I have equipment to play with this stuff now. It's going to be a first for me, and hopefully I can bring you along for the ride. Catch you again soon. Please like, please subscribe to follow this. Um, always appreciative of any comments, any feedback that you can leave. Thank you again, and catch you again soon.